will hide you as high impact with six books in isolation and I picked this up when I went into Oxford Library when it first opened and I love the title it also grabbed me Stranger Than Fan Fiction by Chris Kofer now I knew after the event that he is Kurt in Glee he has done is a philanthropist a singer writer obviously actor he's on the board of several LGBTQ charities and top man top man he's 30 years old and he's done a hell of a lot and i say this because obviously i'm not a fan because i've never watched an episode of glee in my entire life so no correction i watched halfway through the first one and i was like this thing i'm too british and too cynical for this and i know how popular it was globally but <clears throat> this wasn't my this was my kind of my kind of tv show i'm too cynical but this was definitely written from personal experiences okay this was now here we read the blurb and then talk about the book <clears throat> Cash Carter is a young, world-famous lead actor of the hit television show Whiskers. When four fans jokingly invite him on a cross-country road trip, they are shocked that he actually takes them up on it. Chased by paparazzi and handed by reporters, this unlikely crew embarks on a journey of a lifetime. But along the way, they discover that the star they love has deep secrets he's been keeping. One will come to learn about his life with the mysterious person they thought they knew, will teach him about the power of empathy and the irrevocable bond of true friendship. Right, so, so you can imagine this is a book about fandom, in a way. Now, I obviously, you know, if there's Batman can right behind me and there's Pokemon there, I am a self-professed member of the Geek Nation, okay? I have been since my teens. Um, I collect comic books, I love science fiction, I love fantasy, I love anime, and I like fan fiction too because I like how sometimes... The way the fans take things on board sometimes I think it could be better than what the writers intended so not a sight on writers but hey you know <clears throat> fan fiction is a way of kind of correcting in a way to kind of give the story what you want and yes slash fiction exists and everyone has their kind of you know fandom kind of thing that they go into and yes yeah so I like fan fiction and i absolutely love being a geek okay i like the fact okay i've made so many solid friends of being geek culture but at the same time i am aware i'm gonna say this now of the toxic fandom that comes with it and we were talking about this recently okay of the gatekeepers of fandom people who are so so into it that they don't like a word of dissent i mean i will be truly honest okay the star wars sequels okay i didn't particularly like overall in the end okay but, I've never against any of the actors, but I just didn't like what they went with it. I understand why a lot of fans were hurt by that. I remember my disappointment back in the 90s with the way Sam, Dr. Sam Beckett spelt wrong and said he never returned home in Quantum Leap. I think that was my first kind of geek disappointment. And yeah, so I understand how fans can be disappointed and I'm fans how deep fans invest in these characters. <clears throat> and if it doesn't go their way, how they react, okay? So, and it starts off at a Comic-Con called WizCon. Now, Cash Carter is the star of a show called WizKids. And he started at this job when he was 12 years old. He's now in his 20s. And you can imagine, nine years, you're a child actor. You're growing into an adult. But fans don't like that. Now, another example I'm going to give, okay, of how people will always see, if you're a child actor, people will always see you as that, is people don't like it when the child actors grow up. Now, Miley Cyrus, whatever she's done with her career, the fact is she broke away from being Hannah Montana wanted to do something new and modern, okay? People were offended by that. How Basically, how dare Hannah Montana, you know, forge her own path? <clears throat> I mean, it's quite telling, okay, the last episode of Hannah Montana, Miley actually takes the wig off, and Han we never see Hannah again. Basically, Hannah's, Hannah's gone, okay? But it's a happy design. I do watch Hannah Montana. And I remember not so long ago, um, okay, this sounds really bizarre to feed into it, okay, but the voice of Peppa Pig, the cartoon Peppa Pig, which is aimed at toddlers, okay, now you can imagine I've got nine nephews and nieces in total, I've seen Peppa Pig, okay, don't particularly like it, but hey, kids do. So, Harley Bird, who is the voice of Peppa Pig, she turned 18 and she was seen basically coming out of a nightclub drunk on her 18th birthday. People were like, oh my god, Peppa Pig, shock horror, she's drunk. And I'm like, she's a child actor who's now an adult who went out on her birthday. She's not Peppa Pig. She may voice a character, but she is not. She's entitled to her own life. 
But people don't like it when child stars grow up. And sometimes they've got this like really, really extreme to kind of break up from that. To be a child actor and then go into become an adult, transition from being an adult actor, normally they've really got to do something really, really drastic. Okay? Now, a good example of that is Jodie Foster. Now, Jodie Foster, Freaky Friday, Can Shoot, Little Girl Lives Down the Lane. Okay, she was a sociopath, Little Girl Lives Down the Lane. But obviously she was a child actor who broke away and then watch that and then she kind of broke that with the accused now you can imagine this is when back in the 80s when that film came out for the audience who'd known jodie foster as the girl from freaky friday okay to suddenly watch her in taxi driver and then the accused suddenly she managed to break the curse if you will she's shown the world that no she was an adult now, even though in um, Taxi Driver she was a teenager, the accused broke that permanently. But for normally actors have got this like very, very drastic to kind of for that to happen. And history is full of obviously child actors who don't go into it adult in the adult way because they've just had enough or they're sick of it. I don't want to do something new as well. I've got the Goonies um, on Blu-ray in there. And it has a commentary with them, and it follows them, the ones who stayed into acting, and the ones who didn't. They all been very, very successful in their, in their fields. I mean, can you imagine, okay, that the brother in The Goonies, that's Josh Brolin. I mean, I can't say everything. I've all, the, all the actors in The Goonies, the Oscar winners, the, the brother. But anyway, talking about that for children. But I understand the worst world, okay, of fandom and toxic fandom, okay? And people identify with these characters so much. Forget about the actors, who are portraying them, who are nothing like the characters in real life. Okay, so understand the toxic fandom, understand the fandom, being a geek, take on with the book review. Here we go. Right. All these people were at WizCon because they're fans of the hit television series WizKids. The show was an action adventure series that followed a trio of young geniuses who travel through space and time in an adventure they constructed out of a porta potty. Okay, which, uh, okay, they were all meaning, so basically they go through crap. They go through crap. Okay, I, I like the fact, okay, that Chris Cove has got, this book is very, very satirical in its outlook, okay? I mean, this show that everyone goes nuts over, and there's a convent, well, there's a geek con about it, a whiz con. They just try to do it out of a porta so basically they go through shit. They go through shit. Nice, nice, okay? This bit here. I ratted out the Wizards, as they called themselves, I'm more excited to see Cash Carter than anyone else on the panel. They went in costume, almost everyone in the theatre wore a t-shirt with pictures of his character, Dr. Webster, Dr. Webster Bumfuzzle. The Doctor was famous for thick glasses, green bow tie and blue laboratory coat. The Wizards whispered amongst themselves, so they speculated what Cash Carter was doing at that exact moment. We were excited at the about the panel as they were. At the same time, um, Cash is pretty hungover. And eating um, marijuana gummy bears. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you can imagine. I mean, imagine Cash Carter having to actually do this for over for a decade. Okay? He's in his 20s. He's wearing a bow tie. And being, a ch in a way, he's being a child actor. Even though he's in his 20s. He's not been able to break out of that. Right. <clears throat> and it does not hold back on how toxic the fandom is. Okay? This is page 16. And this is when, okay, there's obviously people getting up, people at the panels, people's talking, okay, people with the questions, which they have to ask, which I just always ask over and over again. Here we go. Please have me back, WizCon, Jennifer Small said into her microphone. First of all, so wonderful to be back at WizCon. There's one thing the Wiz kids agreed on. It was that Jennifer Smalls was Satan in black leggings. Before she reported for Entertainment Weekly, Jennifer worked on a website called Gotcha, a gossip blog devoted to outing constantly gay actors, Breaking up celebrity couples, started pregnancy rumours, leaking new photos, making life as difficult for anyone possible in the public eye. Yeah. I mean, basically, this bitch, Jennifer Smalls, actually docks cash. You know, they bought his first home. Okay? Yeah. But obviously, but, but she's still there. She's a horrible person. Okay? Horrible person. It does not hold back on how horrible, horrible Hollywood is. Okay? And how it treats its actors. And it's, um... It's interesting, okay, when you meet these characters, okay, these four individuals who live by this TV show, okay? 
who go on this kind of adventure with um, with Cash. This bit here. This bit here, okay, this is Mo, okay. And um, Mo tucks her hair behind her ears, had a bit of seat as she was scribing her work on a morning talk show. Discussing her fan fiction. A story that described explored Dr. Peach Fazel's sexual awakening, she described, written in the style of a Nicholas Sparks novel. The novel opens with Dr. Bum Fazel and Dr. Peaches, so Dr. Peach Tree, who is the, um, uh, like, what they weren't day on the TV show, travelling through the Andromeda Galaxy where they crash onto a planet where physical content is forbidden. At first, they submit to the laws of the alien world with resistance, but the longer they are marooned, they, the more un undeniable attraction grows between them. Tension rises with every passing hour, and animistic desire consumes them. Okay? Yeah, basically she's discussing her fan fiction. With people who write fan fiction or someone who actually reads fan fiction, yeah, people you know, people who are open about their fan fiction, um, often do. Often do. Okay. So but so these people are so entrenched in this this world, okay, that um Topa, who okay, I'm gonna talk about the characters in this book, okay, the four who are on the ride with Cash. Now, there's Joey, because each one has their actual drum, and it reminded me a little bit, a, a lot, of a film from 1994 called Reality Bites, okay? So, Joey, he is um, gay, he lives in the Midwest, he's also biracial, his dad's a pastor, and so his parents are very, very religious, they describe, it's like scripture in the house, okay? That's Joey. Mm -hmm. There's Mo, she doesn't want to go to Stanford University because her parents are putting on the peer pressure on her. Okay, there's Sam who is transgendered, he's transgendered, um, and at the same time kind of crushes on Topa, okay, who can't really go into the career he wants because he's caring for his disabled brother, okay, along with his mum, okay. So these four individuals kind of connect through their fandoms in a way, but they've got their own kind of issues going on because obviously they're transitioning from, as Cash is transitioning, or trying to transition, okay, from a child star to an adult actor these kids are also transitioning from being children to adults there's a lot of parallels here okay so Topher basically he seems to treat cash as kind of like his um, own personal best friend and he's constantly sending him messages about his life and what's going on and um, he basically says i love this in an email we'll leave tomorrow on a cross-country road trip if you're free we'll, we'll love for you to join us lol okay and then the active replied, with two words, Topher Collins' life was never the same. What time? Basically, Cash Carter has decided to join him on this road trip. And you can imagine being a fan. Now, if you're watching this, it doesn't really matter what your fandom is, what you're into. Now, I absolutely love Red Dwarf. It's one of my favourite fandoms. It's one of the shows that basically made me into a geek. Okay? Bridget, never heard of it? British sitcom? Okay? Check it out. Six episodes a season. Okay, it's got a couple of feature lengths too. And it's absolutely fantastic. She's been running for whilst I was a teenager. So, if I was going to go on a road trip in the UK with, um, I, I like maybe, maybe Craig Charles, okay? Or Danny John Jules. Oh, just give me all four of them, okay? I do not, oh, if I was, because I love Star Trek, I like Michael Dawn, okay? Um, DS9, give me Aaron Eisenberg. Sadly, he passed away um, recently, but... Um, yeah, or Michael Dawn again. <laughs> so, he played Wolf. Um, Voyager gave me seven of nine. <laughs> Watching this, it, you can easily kind of imagine who you would love, actors you would love from your favourite fandoms. Okay? Hey, give me a Batman. <laughs> um, give me a Batman. <sighs> yeah, give me Michael Keaton. Okay? Give me Michael Keaton. Because <laughs> I get Beetlejuice and Batman, two for the price of one. Okay, so... So Cash joins them on this road trip, okay, as you can imagine, they're, they're all totally freaked out, they're all like, this kind of like, you know, the moment, and they kind of originally view him as like, oh my good god, you know, because in their head, he's still Dr. Bumfuzz, oh, I can't believe I'm saying that, but to them, he's kind of like, you know, he's part of the, the, the fandom that kind of, you know, is such an important part of their lives, but if I finally get to meet the real person, okay, behind, <laughs> behind the lab coat and the bow tie, They've actually seen a man, not a child. He's several years older than them. He's seen a bit more experienced more. And he's jaded and he's cynical. 
He's not a sweet and nice guy. He's actually hiding a lot of physical pain. And I love that. I love that. He basically shatters their illusions. And he does it in such a great way. Now, Chris Kofer, you are a fantastic actor. Sorry. Well, I can comment. Well, you are in Glee. I'm going to say this right now. You, you're a fantastic guy. You're a fantastic writer. Okay? <clears throat> it's here. It's page 96. It kind of takes a while, okay, for this kind of book to get going. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Tova said. Forgive us, but we're kind of freaking out right now. I hope you would come, but I didn't expect you to come up. Wait, you're not here because you think I'm dying, right? I hope no one told you I was sick or something because I'm perfectly healthy. Cash rug. Now, I'm perfectly here on my inhalation, he said. Get a bunch of strangers on the road to visit stuff again and make a hobby. Of, but I figured, <laughs> why the fuck not? You only live once. Unless you're Buddhist and you come back a couple of times, apparently. Incarnation, they call it. And these are those friends you wrote about. Okay? Right. So, yes, yeah, so he joins them. And once they kind of warm up to him, he kind of... Shatters their illusions of the show, okay? They see an entertain, entertaining show. He shows them a kid that it's not. There's stunt work. There's long hours. He doesn't see the sun sometimes. He's always working. And he's tired. He's exhausted. He's mentally jaded. He wants out. He generally wants out, okay? Right. And the thing is, that when he starts being honest with them, I like the fact that he turns it on his head about their own hypocrisy because they don't like the answer sometimes about how cynical he is. And I, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant, okay? Because people don't want to know the truth sometimes. If you're someone in the public eye, be very, very careful, okay, about what you say. If they don't toe the party line, if you don't kind of support everything else that everyone else does, okay, they will shame you. You know, you go on Twitter, okay, and it's cancel so-and-so. Okay. Because cancel, cu cancel culture sadly does exist, Okay. Look, the five of us are going to be together for a while. I like this experience to be as authentic as possible. Part of this is getting to be as authentic as, authentic as possible. I'm glad you like the show. I'm happy to answer many questions if you want, as long as you stop truth shaming me. Truth shaming, Joey asked. What's that? It's like fat shaming, but for honest people, Cash explained. It's the reason famous people can never be truthful when they speak publicly. Think about it. Everyone usually has the answers they want to hear before they ask the questions, especially from celebrities. However, if we're honest and it differs from what people want to hear, and intentionally burst in bubble or two, we are shamed for it. We're called ungrateful, selfish, disgraceful, everything but truthful. Essentially, if these are the answer everyone wants to hear, but it doesn't seem genuine enough, we're shamed for it too. It's a real mind fuck. And that's so right. That is so right. You've got to do social media, okay? The counter culture totally exists. I mean, this book, written by Chris Kofer, felt so f real. It felt so experienced by him. When I think of Chris Kofer, who I mean, I don't even know, but if they made a film, okay, I he's got to pay cash because what he's saying felt so real. And I can imagine, you know, he's basically channeling himself through his characters, through his character. It's it's fantastic, it's absolutely fantastic. So much for the metal, I'm adjusting it. So they go on and they go on and they go on. And the thing is, the fact is that the culture that these four I've been observing for so long. They then become a part of it because they go to a um, rock gig, so punk gig, by a group called Sat um, Rosemary's Abortion, which is a fantastic name for a band, by the way. And they are caught up on it. Kaj decides to dance insanely, gets some fake ideas, he shows them how to live a little, okay? And this is the poem in headlines Television actor blanks out in St. Louis. Headline from CNN. Whiz kids whizzers out of control. Meet me in St. Louis. Floor stays, says the cash carter. Liberal goes down in red state. Okay? And they want to be in, actually in the video. Okay? With him. Because they're dancing. They're dancing. Okay? But the fact is, that the fact is that the fact is, so I'm going to look bit. Okay? The fact is that they were there. The fact is that they were there. The fact is that cash was out and abort, uh, a group called uh, Rosemary's Abortion was there. Get this. There's so many questions. I don't know where to start. First off, why is Cat in St. Louis? Why is it a punk rock concert when all he knows is, he listens to is alternative mu music? Okay? Why is he dancing like an epileptic on roller skates? But one question. Why is no one yet to ask him who the hell the, those four deplorables are? Me and the four that he's with him. Okay? Okay, God forbid. Because you can't listen to any other alternative music. You've got to keep on a certain kind of path. Okay? But this book really does explore okay, the lives of the other four like characters in this okay, who are on this road trip who are having their illusion shattered to care about Cash Carter who've been kind of swept along for the ride 
but it really kind of forces them to really, really question their lives and what they want from it. That's interesting to see because when I mentioned Joey at the beginning, okay, now Joey is closeted, gay, biracial, and lives in the Midwest, okay, he's not having any time with his pastor and very religious family. So, on the side, he's been communicating online with someone, okay, he thinks he's older than what he is, and so he wants to lose his virginity before he goes on to college. Now, you can say right now, okay, this is like a PSA, this is the, you know, more of the week, this is a reality. But notice me, there's something in this book that you do not see in fiction like this, okay? You do not see honesty like this. And this felt so personal, okay? This is when that Joe with his fake ID meets up with Brian, okay? And truth comes out, okay? But this, this is, instead of basically losing his virginity to Brian, okay, he's a architect, nice guy, he gives life advice, and this felt real and personal, you know something, I really want people to appreciate this, because I would have loved to have read something like this in a book when I was a teenager, and that didn't happen, okay, I just love this bit here, I'm going to read this, this is so brutally honest, and I loved it, okay, why would you want to lose a virginity to a total stranger? Wouldn't you rather wait for someone special? Why would I just get it out of the way so I don't have to think about it anymore? That's your hormones talking, Brian said. There's little bastards who would do anything to get you to spread your seed. That's a biological fact. It's very impossible not to when you're young and live in an over sexualized society. Hell, even Instagram turns it into a digital red light district after a certain hour. How can you not be tempted? Dude, we just met on a hookup app. Joe reminded him. Are you trying to, seems you're trying to give me an absence talk right now. It's not the point I'm trying to make, Brian said. Look, sex is the best, but can be the worst. If you're not careful, you first man could potentially set your tone of your entire sex life. If you don't start off with a decent experience and don't go into respecting yourself, it could lead to some really bad habits. You don't want to be one of those guys who film on issues, dumps into bed with every guy they meet, believe me. Brian drowned his Manhattan in one gulp like he was washing away a bad memory. I'm hooking up, are we? Joey asked. Absolutely not, Brian said. You're going to be talking about your first rest of your life. The last thing you want to do is look back with regrets. Feel like someone unworthy is walking away with a piece of your soul. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. If I could do it over again, I'll lose it to a friend I knew I could trust. Someone I could be safe with and laugh about it later. Right. You know something? I would have loved to wear something like this when I was a teenager. And that didn't happen. So, f credit to you, Chris. Absolute credit to you. Okay? That bit with Joey and Brian felt real and raw. And absolutely amazing. So, respect to you as a writer. That, that hit me. That got me. So, thank you. So, it's okay. So, so yeah, this is basically what this book is about. This is exploring, okay, life and life choices, okay, and how the world that these characters are in Hamilton is not easy. It's not easy. You have Sam who has obviously issues coming out as transgender to her family, so to, to his family. You know, coming out to his family as being transgender. And concerned about being accepted. Sadly, Sam had already had a really bad experience at um, a senior psychiatrist who basically dismissed his feelings as because you didn't have a father, that's how you feel why you feel like this. And at the same time, Sam is a transgendered man who crushes on Topher. So he has to deal with the experience of crushing on someone by living your true self and not knowing how Topher sees them. Okay, so, yes, <laughs> a lot of complication there, a lot of complication, okay. So the book goes on and they go through many, many adventures. I think one of my favourite bits is when they go to a theme park that Cash went to when they were little. Well, say when he was little. It's closed. It's closed up. So he scales the fence. They walk through the decaying park. They light a fire and they get stoned. <laughs> because his tears are so straight laced. They, you know, they've never done anything like that. No fake ID, no drinking, no none living on the edge. So, Cash basically forced them to kind of do so in a way. But you never know they're not comfortable with. But the fact is, okay, that I never ever heard of Never Have I Ever. Okay, fine. Really? Cool, we had a game back in the 90s. Okay. So, before I tell you here, 
it all comes to a head, okay, is whilst they're on their road trip, okay, and Cash is really warming up to them, and it's kind of forcing them to kind of, you know, see the lives that they want, okay. In a way, he's very much like James Dean, mm -hmm. and they actually do drive a the car that James Dean did. Then they find out that Wiz Kids is being cancelled. And the tone of this book totally shifts as well. And Cash, I love Cash. He calls them out their own hypocrisy. He is absolutely fantastic for that. This is after a week, okay, of him opening up to them, them opening up to him. Him kind of really kind of connecting with someone. And you can see a real kind of friendship building, okay. And then they find that not through him but through social media, their whiz kids is cancelled, okay. Right. It's a bit here. And I love the fact, okay, that he calls them out on their hypocrisy. She told us this, Mo said. You should have prepared us for this, this disappointment. Cash finished her sentence. I'm so disappointed in you. Actually, I don't really give a shit. I'm really disappointed in the whole world. We came to four more nerds that added to the list. Cash, you knew what the show meant to us, Tober said. You knew that we'd been watching it since we were in elementary school. And you knew the show was going to keep us connected when we went away to college. How can we not be disappointed right now? The actor slowly shook his head at the notion. Dumbass. Excuse me? Don't talk about you. I'm talking about me. See, for once, I thought I found people that might care about me. On the show I was on. For once, I thought I might have found a group of friends, but I guess I was wrong. There are two types of people that me someone gets to have in their lives. Friends, fans and critics. Who for expecting any, anything else. Right. He calls them out on it. He absolutely calls them out on it. Now, the reason is, okay, that Cash is on this adventure. Is that Cash is dying. Okay. Cash is actually dying. He's got brain, he's got brain tumours. He doesn't have long to live, and basically he knew he was dying, and he wanted to basically do one last... He wanted to be a teenager again. He wanted to be free and independent again before he died. Remember, he was in a public eye from the age of 12. He's now in his 20s. He's been a decade on this show. That did know he's wanted out for a very, very long time. And he wanted one actual moment of just connecting with someone before he died. Okay? He wanted that. Now, also, in a way, he also provides them with the funds and the opportunity to make their, own, their dreams come true. Sam has the money for his transition. Mo, who's obviously the right to get the opportunity for his life rights, um, um, uh, Cash's um, autobiography. Uh, Joey gets money for the college that he wants to go to, as does Topa. Okay, Mo also gets to go to the college of her choice too, because she basically um, uh, blackmails her dad. Basically, she blackmails her dad, saying, "No, I'm not going to Stanford. I'm going to Columbia and then reserves." And one thing I did like, okay, this sounds really bizarre, but I mentioned reality bites at the start of it. Now, the interesting thing is this. Now, I don't know if it's intentional or not on Chris Cofer's part, but in the film Reality Bites, which was 1994, which was kind of like you know a very very big film in when I was when I was a teenager. Is there's a character called Sammy who's gay, positive and gay. Now the fact is that Joey's coming out is not shown at all. Okay? His life is shown, but his final coming out, his big moment with his family isn't shown. Which is very much like Sammy in reality bites. Sammy will talk to the camera about being gay, but when he comes out to his family, that's never seen. Okay? Which I thought that happened here, and I thought that was a reference to reality, but I'm looking way too much into this. Way too much into this. And one thing I absolutely love is that it doesn't hold back on the hypocrisy of these characters too, because you can imagine, they spent a week, okay, with the guy they grew up watching. They grew up with a week in their fandom, if you will. They spent a week growing up. But it ends, and I love this, just, just once again, highlight hypocrisy. This is also being a satirical novel, okay? Wednesday nights aren't going to be the same, Tova said. Maybe we'll just start video message one night a week. A video message one night a week and start a new show like Doctor Who or Supernatural. We can write um, Huda and Davy into it while they're overseas. Okay? Right. I mean, you can imagine. And also, the fact is, okay, not shows that are currently running, but shows, okay, that have a very long history. Supernatural I've never watched, but it's lasted over a decade. And Doctor Who's got 50 years worth of episodes, well, the ones that we can find. Okay? So... Yes, so they're basically, they're, the pinnacle of their geekdom has gone, if you will, he's passed on, he's passed away. And now, okay, they're just best into a new fandom. Okay, this book is everything. It's satirical, it's dark, it's funny, it's dark comedy running through it. It's blunt, it's honest, it's raw. And you know something, I, I make a cracking film and I want Chris Kofar to play Cash Carter, okay? 
So, I liked this book. As someone, okay, who grew up watching shows like Star Trek and Star Wars as a distraction from what went on in my own head to, you know, the world made no sense and the world may be intolerant, but the world of the Federation wasn't well, at a stretch, you know? I, I, I understood the world that Cash Card came from and I absolutely understood the world of fandom too. So I really, really, spoil territory aside incidentally, I really recommend this book. I wish some of the words in it I, I could have read. Someone would have written for me when I was a teenager. So, I liked it. So I'm signing off here. Since Books Now Station, sign off. And bye now.